Hello and welcome to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video course in which I will explain how to create and host a website, create and host an email server and how to create a fully featured continuous integration pipeline at home for free using a Raspberry Pi. Uh, for free assumes you already have the Raspberry Pi of course. Let's get going. So I'm going to make lots of little lessons as part of this course so that each video is very specific to a particular topic, allowing you to go back to a particular video in isolation and get the information you want. There are some prerequisites you need to know. Uh, going, there's going to be some knowledge and some equipment you're going to need. You probably already have it, but I'll cover what that is. And there are going to be some elements that you will have to do for yourself, for example, I can show you how on my router to punch a hole in the firewall, but you will have to do it yourself uh, on your router. I use WordPress for this course because it's so prevalent. It makes up over 35% of websites on the internet. Therefore, for this project, it makes sense to use a very popular CMS. Also, CMSs are notoriously difficult to work with as a developer in terms of the CI, and that made it a challenge, and I love a challenge. So what am I on about? Well. If you want to host a website, there are really two routes. There are actually three or four, but there are two main routes that people will go down. Uh, the first one is you will make the website at home, probably, particularly now during COVID-19, uh, and you will upload it onto a hosting provider. There are loads of hosting providers. It's such a common thing to do. Uh, and they will then make it available through their uh, IP address and an open port to the internet, allowing people to access it. And they will probably also handle the DNS servers for you. So that's the relationship between IP and domain name. In fact, they might even have a service in which you can buy the domain. This obviously all costs money, so you're paying for the service. And actually, the resources you get for the money aren't that great. You'll have access to a shared CPU if you buy a basic plan, and you'll be, be able to access a small amount of RAM. But it's quick and really easy. You can do it in minutes. I, however, as a proper nerd and somebody who's interested in how things work, realised that, of course, you can do everything you want through your own router. There's a little picture of a router. And actually, if you host a website on something like a Raspberry Pi, which you're happy to leave running 24 seven because they're so energy efficient, you actually have a web server. And nowadays with Raspberry Pi 4 in particular, it is a very competent web server, far more powerful than you will get uh, on a shared hosting platform. Of course, it's going to take you a lot longer to do. There is a lot of learning involved, but that's good because you learn new skills. And of course, there's the absolute brilliant advantage that it is completely free, assuming you already have the Raspberry Pi. So to just to summarize, we're going to create a WordPress website and host it on a Raspberry Pi. We're going to create and host an email server, which is required, particularly for WordPress, uh, for things like contact forms and logging in to, to your website, things like that. So we're going to do that. We're going to be leveraging Docker containers to make sure we develop things in a modern way, but also because it makes deploying the website so much easier. Uh, we're going to set up a modern development environment that's nice and easy, and I'll show you how to do that in Gulp. That'll make your development so much easier with WordPress. And then I'm going to show you how to make a continuous integration environment uh, slash pipeline for WordPress, which is a huge undertaking, but will make your life so much easier with WordPress. So, as I mentioned, these, this is three the four themes, sorry. Each one is going to be uh, a separate video collection. Uh, the email server, the website development, the website hosting, and the CI for WordPress. Four themes, four video collections. They are therefore independent, and you could go through each one uh, separately, or you could follow a, a thread through them all if you're starting from scratch to see how it all works and fits together. So, what do you need? Well, you need a Linux computer. This shouldn't come as a surprise. Ideally, a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. This won't work on a less powerful computer than a Raspberry Pi 3. 3 actually pushes this to its limit already. So I recommend a 4. I use a 4 myself, but in this demonstration I will be using my only free Raspberry Pi, which is a Pi 3. You'll need admin permissions on a router. Absolutely need that. I can't stress it enough. You will need a domain, unsurprisingly. You can get free ones, but I recommend you buy you buy one, one that works for you and is, is quite nice for the purposes you want to use it for. Uh, you'll need an internet connection, but more importantly, you'll need, well, not more importantly, more obviously, 
uh, you'll need access to your ISP support. So you need to be the account holder because you will be having to ask your internet service provider for a few things over the course of this course. So what do you need to know? Well, you need to know the basics of computer networking. We can't really do this without you having some basic knowledge of that uh, because we're going to be making changes to your DNS server, which you will have set up. You will be needing to make changes to your firewall. So you need to have some basic knowledge of computer networking. You also need to know quite a bit about PHP and JavaScript. Not a lot, but enough uh, to understand what we're doing. I will be covering these things from a basic level, but nonetheless, it would help no end if you already have some knowledge in this area. Uh, you'll need some basic CLI knowledge as well of Linux CLI because uh, the CI, the um, the web hosting and the email server are all going to be set up using the Linux CLI. And finally, some basic knowledge of Docker would make life a lot easier for yourself as well. But you don't need it necessarily, but it would help. Right, that's it. That's the introduction video. That's what you need to know. That's what we're going to cover. That's what you're facing ahead of you on this course. So... Because I didn't want to end this video without you having made some progress on what we're doing, I wanted to create this checklist. Things to do basically before you move on. Number one, get a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 with a clean, fresh version of Debian installed. That's because this course is going to start with a nice, fresh shell uh, that's going to have a little blinking cursor and it's going to be a fresh installation so you can follow along with me. So it's a good idea to do that. It avoids any conflicts. Uh, absolutely make sure you have admin access to your booter. Don't bother going on with this if you don't. Uh, next thing to do is to get in contact with your ISP and ask for a static IP. This is because you will probably have a dynamic IP by default unless you've had it changed. And that means if you have a power cut or if you reset your router for whatever reason, you will lose your IP or you might lose your IP. And that means where the IP has changed and therefore the DNS server is pointing your domain to your personal IP. And as your IP has changed, all of a sudden it can't find your website. In fact, it's even worse than that. It'll try and go to somebody else's server for it. Um, get a domain. Yeah. So it goes without saying, get a domain. It doesn't have to be a paid one, though I recommend to get a paid one. It could be a free one, but you will need a domain to do most of this stuff. So do that. If you've done all four of those things, you're ready to go. And hopefully you'll find the course very useful. I think it's very interesting. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, if you could like and subscribe the video, that would be brilliant. It makes it worthwhile for me to do it if I get some feedback. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.